Welcome. In this video, I'm actually going to talk about compound inequalities. Now, compound inequalities are simply more than one inequality put together. Usually it's two, incidentally enough. So um, you, in compound inequalities, you have two types, and or or statements. So occasionally people want to know, when, when does this happen in the real world? Well, compound inequalities happen all the time. Um, one of the ways in which they happen for an and statement, which is where you have sort of an inclusive statement, visually speaking, it's going to look something like this when you graph it on a number line, and that's what we'll do. And One of these can be filled in or whatever, it just depends. Now, um, if I was looking at young adult marketing, and not I don't mean young adult in the colloquial sense like teenager, I mean literally younger adults, so that demographic that lots of people want to reach if they're marketing products, 18 to 34. So I would say that x can be greater than or equal to 18, but it has to be less than or equal to 34 because I want that group of people. As in compound inequality statement or a sentence, I might put the numbers in order, put the x in the middle, and I get this look. That's a nice and statement. Or I might just have them separate and write the word and in there. It just depends. So both of those mean the same thing. And as a, a qualifier in the middle and the x in the middle as well. Just put your numbers in numeric order. Now, what does that look like? If I were to do a inequality uh, on a number line, I may say that 18 is down here, and these are all the ages going up, and it's right here is where 34 is. So I would say that everybody who's 18, so I'm going to go ahead and do, actually I'm going to change color really fast, um, everybody who's 18 follows into this little area that I want, and I might make a line that goes up just a little bit. If you have to write on paper, sometimes teachers will have you do this thing, or they aim it. On the flip side of it, 34 is filled in because it includes 34, and then I just go down and connect them. So like I said, and has sort of a barbell feel to it. Now, what about or statements? Well, a perfect example of an or statement is when the flu shots ran out a few years ago. Now, flu shots have a limited range of things that they can... Uh, sometimes they have a limited amount of uh, flu shot, I should say. Uh, but there's certain ranges of people who should have it more than others if there is a limit. Usually it's everywhere and it's fine and nobody has a problem getting it if they want it or have insurance for it anyway. Um, so a couple years ago that wasn't the case. They didn't have enough of it. So they said basically anybody under the age of five or anybody over or at least 65. That was the age range they said needed to get the flu shot. That's who they sort of held it back for um, if they didn't have enough of it. That was the group. An or statement never has this look to it. It doesn't look like this ever. This is only an and statement. Now, an or statement sort of has the barbell. It doesn't have that barbell feel like this. It tends to have arrows facing away from each other. So I would say that this is down at 5. I would leave it open because it's not 5-year-olds. It's younger than 5. And then it goes down. Now, there is a natural limit down here on this question. I should probably say that it could be 0 because they didn't give it to people who were still in the womb, and they definitely didn't give it to people who won't be born for 10 years because that would make no sense, and how would you do it? So there's a natural limit, but you know, play along with me here. On the other side of it at 65, we can fill it in because a 65 year old can get it on their birthday. Happy birthday, it's a flu shot, worst present ever. Um, well, not really, but it's a pretty bad present. So you get like these arrows facing away. That's compound inequalities in general. That's how you can see them in real life. Now let's, you know, solve a few of them. The solving part of compound inequalities always reminds me of Cat Dog. You may not know Cat Dog, or you might know it. It was a show on Nickelodeon a few years ago. Now, in the, uh, I think it was on Nickelodeon anyway, uh, the idea of Cat Dog was that it had a cat's head on one end and a dog head on the other and it had a body in the middle. Um, I never tried to figure out how it went to the bathroom because it's a lot to think about so just don't overthink that idea and I hope that I didn't push that in your head even though I probably did. So anytime you have this sort of and statement I always think of cat dog so you should probably do that too if that's the way you want to go about it. By the way if you haven't seen anything on solving inequalities before which would be greater than less than um, you probably need to do that before we get into this but you can do that on your own time pause this whatever you want to do never look at this again it doesn't matter. But the idea is when you have this statement that you need to make sure that you have the cat dog body available for both sides. <clears throat> I voice is going out a little bit. So make sure that you sort of circle or box in the whole thing in the middle. You can't just apply the x to the 7 and the 10 to the 13. We're going to make an entire uh, 
prototype of what the dog would look like if it was a dog, and then the cat would look like if it was a cat if we you know separated the two. Anyway, I'm going to write that x plus 10 down twice. Body, body. So I'll put the cat head on over here, and the dog head over here, hence the cat dog. Now I can just solve it. So x is by itself. I need to get rid of plus 10, so I'll subtract 10. That'll go away. So this is not a division, it's a subtraction, so I do not need to flip this over. So x is greater than negative 3. On the flip side of it, once again, no need to flip. x is less than positive 3. So if I were to make a statement in the middle about what this all looks like, I'll put negative 3 here, and x. Put your numbers in order, put your x in the middle, and make sure the inequalities go in the order that they're supposed to. So uh, essentially, to graph it, I'm going to go into over to negative 3, and I'll make a circle. It is included in the answer set because it has that line underneath, so I do need to fill this in. On the flip side of it, I've got this 3 up here, uh, and it, it stays open. There's no line underneath. This is why if you don't know what that means, you should probably watch the video. Now this is x is greater than negative 3, so you may have your, your teacher, whoever, may say to do this, and then this is x is less than 3, so you may need to do this, and you sort of get this all in the middle part. I don't always do that. It depends on what the page looks like I'm graphing on, but you could just move it up just a little bit and then move it down, and it should make that nice barbell feel that you're looking for. So any of these answers, anything from negative 3 up to 3, um, are included in the answer set. So that's one of them. It's pretty simple to do. That's an AND statement. Uh, I'm going to look for an OR statement. Oh, by the way, this AND statement works exactly the same thing, uh, exactly the same as the other. You'll still graph it, it'll still make a barbell. The only difference is you don't have to write the body down twice. You just do x plus 5 is greater than 2 and x minus 5 is less than 2. So don't overthink it, is my point. Um, here's an OR statement. Uh, this looks much like that AND statement did, so we're going to solve it out. m plus 1 is less than negative 9, or m minus 1 is greater than negative 10. So I need to add 1 to both sides here and negative 9. On the other side of it, minus 1, minus 1, so those cancel out, you get negative 10, m is less than negative 10. So it's greater than negative 9, but it's so, uh, from here, what we need to do is just go ahead and graph it. I'm going to do, and if you wanted to go ahead and put an OR statement in there, that's fine too. So I go to negative 10, and I don't need to fill it in, and it's less than, so I'm going to draw my arrows this way. On the opposite side of it, m is greater than negative 9. Well, negative 9 is here, and it goes up. So that's what it ends up looking like overall in the end of all things. Those are OR statements, STAND statements. Let's do one that has uh, two steps in each section. We'll do two of those and we'll be done with this. Move up a little bit to where that actually starts to happen a little more. So here's your basic OR statement. You know, 7m minus 2 is less than or equal to negative 44, or 4 minus 10m is less than negative 26. So what I'm going to do here is just write them down. A revolutionary idea. I'm really coming out with a lot in this that you would never figure it out on your own, I'm sure. Sarcasm, obvious. Uh, so to get rid of minus 2, I need to do plus 2. The cool thing about most compound inequalities is they're not that complicated mathematically. There is a video that I have on, which seems weird to have made it first, but whatever. Um, a video where you do variables on both sides versions of this, so you might want to check that out uh, because it adds a little degree of difficulty to things. Now, I need to get rid of times 7, so I'm just going to divide by 7. I tend to circle this part um, just to remind me whether to flip it or not. It says it's positive, so I don't need to flip it over. So m is less than negative 6, less than or equal to negative 6. On the flip side of it, this is one of those things that you could easily make a mistake on. This negative 10 is never seen by this 4. This 4 doesn't even know it exists. We need to move the 4 first, but we're going to treat it as it's plus 4 because the negative doesn't have anything to do with it. A really common mistake is for someone to say, oh, well, it says minus, so I'll just add 4, but that won't eliminate it. actually create negative 8, so I'm going to subtract 4. So if you need the help, put the plus there. Makes your life easier. This becomes negative 30. 
I'm going to divide by negative 10 here. Now in this case, the uh, circled part is negative, so I do need to flip it over. It becomes greater than, m is greater than 3. So uh, this is an or statement, by the way. I'll go to 3. I don't know if I said negative 3, 3, but it's positive 3. And then just go up, just like this. Probably with better drawing than mine. Uh, negative 6 is less than or equal to, so I do need to fill that in. And it just goes down. So the hardest part is getting it set up. We're going to do one more. And after you set it up, things just seem to go much more smoothly. I wanted to see if I can find one that... There we go. This is a perfect one. Now, this is an and statement, obviously, so we're going to treat it like cat dog a little bit. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do the little things that I always do, which are things like making a box around the middle section. That way I know how it's set up. Some teachers will teach you to just keep that together, and I always separate it. I'm just very visual, uh, so I need to have it in a way that I can sort of understand what I'm supposed to be doing. I don't like to mix in a lot of visual noise just because it's confusing to me. So this is how I would solve it. Anyway, um, from here, you also pay attention. You might notice the fact that I don't move R to the left all the time. It, some people think it makes it easier to graph. I would much rather just read it based off what the variable is. If, area, if R is next to the big end when I'm done, it's greater than. Is R, if it, is R next to the little end? Then it's less than. It's much simpler to me to do it that way. So minus 10, you get negative 24. I need to get rid of times negative 8, so I'm going to divide. You should already have these steps down, because that's why I'm sort of moving quickly on them. 3. Now I divided by a negative, so I need to flip it over. Now, it would be really easy for me to go up to 3 and make my circle, which you can totally do before you start the second one if you want, as long as you don't, you know, slide it all the way down. I would just leave a little bit of space. Now, it would be easy for me to go, oh, well, I go this way because the arrow points that way, or flip the whole thing. But it's just easier to train yourself to learn to say, okay, the variable is next to the little end. This is a big end. So see how far apart it is compared to nothing down here? This is the big end, or this is the little end, as that's the R. So that means it's less than. Little is less. So I just go down just a little bit to remind myself. On the other side, minus 10, those cancel. Negative 8R, and you'll get uh, 24 here. And so I need to divide by negative 8. Once again, I've divided by negative here. So I need to flip over my inequality. And now, it be, oh, I don't know why I drew equal to there. Now I know that I need to flip it over. So in this case, R is greater than because it's next to the big end. See, here's the big end. Here's the little end. So the big end is the next to the R, which means it's greater than. So when I go to negative 3, I don't need to fill it in, but I do need to go up, and I get this look right here. Now, in some cases, I will say that you'll get AND statements that go OR, they go away from each other. Those are special cases, and I'm not covering those here, but it does happen. Uh, I just didn't want you to think that it never did. But anyway, that's it for compound inequalities. If you have an AND statement, if it just says AND, just write them both down, solve them, and graph them according to what they are. You might want to bring them back into a nice visual statement like I'm about to do here. I'll put negative 3 here and 3 here. Well, R is greater than negative 3 and less than 3. So that's a nice mathematical sentence to make, and I have my graph up there. If you have an AND statement like this, uh, think of cat dog. That's what I always do. Uh, make sure you get the whole body into both questions, split it into two, and just solve it. It makes it much more visually appealing. Uh, it's easier to remember what you're doing if you get lost. So I think it's a good plan. You may not, uh, and that's why other methods exist for you to use, but uh, I hope this helped.